episode of Red Talks Live. I'm your host Nathan Pierce, and I am starting a series on infrastructure as code. If you've followed this show for a while, you've probably seen a lot of the work I did on configuration as code. I wrote a webhook server that ran in a virtual appliance, allowing me to manage its configuration from a GitHub repository. And changes, additions, modifications, deletions were all sent via webhook messages to that virtual appliance, um, meaning I had full source code capabilities across its state. Um, that was fantastic for setting up environments, switching between environments back and forth, but it did require that I had the infrastructure in place in the first place. Place. So what I'm going to show now is how to actually build out entire data centers with no infrastructure in place other than the cloud provider itself, which is pretty cool, starting from zero, no, no pre-staging, and I'm going to demonstrate actually building out the environment, repaving it, nuking it, and what, what got me going down this path to work these things out was um, I had uh, literally just four or five days to produce this prototype. Um, of a distributed service delivery network across multiple data center regions. And I realized there was no way I was going to get that done, knowing there was a lot of technology to learn along the way, if I didn't have some reproducible operational capabilities. I needed to be able to go down a path, realize that's not the right way to do this, nuke that and roll back to the previous commit. Now I could manage this using snapshots, yes, but then I've got the chaos of managing snapshots and propagating them across regions. So what I did is I, I invested the time, it took like two hours, it was that simple, uh, to work out how to use HashiCorp Packer and enable me to do that creation of, of this project was done in Amazon, but I, it works in other environments as well. Um, but I was able to actually produce the AMIs I needed and distribute them to the regions I needed them in and all again using source control. I could roll back a commit, I could um, create another branch to test some ideas out and then destroy that if it wasn't right or merge that in if it was right. Um, it was fantastic. And I don't think I will manage a cloud environment in a different way now that I've done this. Like it, it, it was game changing. The, the, that two hours of time to work this out, um, what that gave me was fantastic. So I'm going to go through um, that entire environment that I built, but because I'm going to go through it in extreme detail, even though it did take just like a few half days to, to do, I'm going to do this over a few weeks because I want to show you really how everything works and the decisions I made and the steps that I took um, as I went through it. So lots of detail. I want everyone who watches this to be able to walk away and reproduce the same thing for their own environment. Um, that is the key to this kind of series. So let's switch to the lab environment. Ooh, fancy transition time. Okay, now we've switched over to the lab environment. I'll quickly go through what we're doing here. So first up, I have no AMIs in my AWS account, I've created a new account. Um, I'm using free tier resources. When I built this the first time, it actually ran for a week before it cost me anything and then it's totaled about a buck 50 since then. Um, so it's pretty empty environment. It's, we're not gonna click on all of them everywhere. You can see the point. Um, okay, all good, everything's empty. Um, now what I'm going to do is show how I was able to do this using two things. One is HashiCorp Packer, which is a fantastic tool for producing AMIs, or you can do images in other environments, GCPs, virtual machines, like it's pretty rad. Um, I just happen to be doing this project in AWS. Um, here's a terminated instance from before. I'll explain why that's there and what that's doing. So let's go and show how it all worked. Um, this, all of this work was three files. It was crazy how simple this was. Here is a very basic packer template. So you can see in here it's saying, I want you to go and find me a T2 micro instance out of Amazon's catalog. Here are my access keys for deploying it. Um, and here are the regions that I want it to appear in, these four regions. Now you notice destination regions is separate from region. So region is where it creates an AMI from which it distributes so it creates an instance of a, of a blank AMI, it builds whatever I tell it to in this builder, and then it distributes it from that region to the destinations. Um, so this is considered this like a workspace for the processing and building of this template. Um, now, the infrastructure as code part is delivered using GitHub Actions, which are just YAML files in .github slash workflows and the two files. And you can see here, I've got two. One just validates my template. 
So any push to a branch other than master, where this file was created or changed, um, it will then go and download the official HashiCorp Packer container, pass it the validate command and the file that I'm using uh, to build my environments, and then run that uh, in a GitHub action. This is a second one that says only to work on the master branch. So if I merge into master, then I must be happy with that and it validated fine. And you'll see the addition of the AWS keys, which when I run build and provide it those keys, pack will actually deploy it for me into, um, here they are, the keys, into Amazon's uh, AMS, AMI's uh, registry. So let's quickly run this. And I'm gonna show first a commit. I'm gonna fake a change here. Let's just take out that carriage return. And uh, then I'm going to go in here. I'll commit that. Um, and then let's push that. And while that's running, I'm now gonna switch over and take a look at GitHub. So here's my environment in GitHub. I'm gonna look at actions and it's triggered Packer Demo. Fabulous. Let's go and look at what's running. Um, so this GitHub action has gone and downloaded Packer Lite. It's run Packer Lite. It's passed in my container as an argument. Here it is, validate that. And the end result, if I open that up again, Template validated successfully. Fantastic. You don't create these actions here. I mean, you can build a new workflow here, um, but as long as you put those template files in the right location, um, they will magically appear um, because they have all the information they need to run uh, in the repository. So we're happy with that configuration. All that's done is validate it using Packet. Now what I'm gonna do is create a pull request. So let's merge this into do, 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 master. And now instead of running that validate command, it's going to, do, 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 do. there it is, merge pull request. So let's merge them in and done. So let's go back to our fabulous action. It's picked up a different build Actually, let's go back to that. Build and deploy now instead of validate because it saw from the GitHub action that this one was a merge against master and that tells it you must actually go and do the build. So here it is, it's pulled down the container, it's checked out the repository into a workspace and now it's actually going to build that and start pushing it into my various regions. So you remember that before we had region and region destinations. So if I go and look in region, I mean, Northern California, which was US West one where I told it. So here's the container spun up to build my AMIs. So once it's done this and run any scripts and modifications I've told it to, it starts propagating that around. Here we go. It's already available in North California. Let's go to North Virginia. Is it propagated there yet? Already there. Wow. Uh, look at the timestamp. I mean, that's pretty quick. It's gone and done everything I wanted it to. Fabulous, I now have this instance everywhere. So now that my instance is all over the place, I can actually use that to build. So now it's gonna destroy that instance that was there and clean up after itself so that if we go back to Northern California, to instances, it has finished and it's stopped and gonna terminate that image. So that's pretty amazing, really, because that change, my instances are now version controlled in a repository. I can roll back that merge and I will end up with exactly what I had before. Couple of awesome tricks I picked up along the way. When you do the naming, um, you can have a common name which will actually, if paired with these two, it will overwrite whatever was there before. It will just keep overwriting the top of it. Um, it will not keep previous images. Now I'm fine with that because I version controlled this and I can get back to a previous state anytime I want. And I don't wanna be wasting space storing snapshots and paying for them. 
Now, I did include in the README, if you want to preserve your previous ones, just until you get some confidence with the tooling, what you can do is tell it to create a unique name. So for example, in the AMI name field there, if you throw a timestamp in, that will always be new. That's like a Unix timestamp, a long number of how many milliseconds since the epoch. Here, I can actually do something a little friendlier where it does the date, uh, ISO time. Clean resource name just means don't use um, characters that won't be supported in the name field. So that was a handy thing added by Packer. You can learn more about the Packer kind of template engine um, and clean resource name. This is all documented for you. Um, so once I do that, if I put in a timestamp on the end of the name, then I no longer need these two because it will always be a unique instance. But then I have to remember, I own the responsibility of going through and deleting the old ones over time because they're just sitting there charging you space, storage space. Um, so I prefer to actually overwrite them, not have a unique name, have a common name, force overwrite, because at any time I can roll back in my code and say, no, I want to get back to the version I deployed three months ago. Um, in fact, I might actually just fork that and create a whole separate image uh, based on that one. And to me, the, the source control is much better for me to manage than have to remember my storage costs forever. So I hope that was useful. This is a really simple one that I've just shown you right now. I mean, it's just created a T2 micro with no changes. It's completely vanilla. Um, but it's put it in my region. So what I'm going to show you though next time um, is if we go into, it's still finishing, fabulous. If we go into um, templates now, actually no, wrong. Let's go into, here we go, over here. Here's a version of a packer template that is building multiple image versions, Ubuntu 16, um, I think I've got eight, did I strip it out? No, this one has only got one, but what I'm doing in the builder is I'm installing, I'm running an install console script. I'm installing DNS mask. I'm installing Docker, and then I'm self-registering as part of this script. Any container that gets spins up, uh, self-registers itself with the console client running on the Docker host and propagates that throughout my environment. So I don't have to go and do any manual management. Services are auto-registered by themselves and everything is findable and discoverable and auto-tagged. Um, so I can get down to filtering on versions, all sorts of crazy magic stuff. So the next episode, I'm gonna go through how to build out and customize these AMIs um, as part of uh, the wonder that is Docker running with GitHub Actions uh, in version control. So I hope that's been useful to you. Uh, that's another episode of RedTalks.live on the Infrastructure as Code series. Thanks for listening. <laughs>